میں نے بڑے بڑے اچھے اچھے بیٹس مین کو گیندے کی ہیں وسیم کو بہت سوچ کے کرنی پڑتی تھی پاکستان کرکٹ ٹیم کو ریفورڈ ٹو کیری ون اور ٹو یانگسٹرز لیفٹ ہینڈر ویون رچرڈ تھا وسیم اکرم ایون دو از ا ویری فائن بولر نا بٹ ہی ہیز لاس دیٹ پیس جب چلے جاتے ہو تو پھر کوئی پوچھتا نہیں ہے جب ہوتے ہو پھر سارے اپ کے ارد گرد پھرتے رہتے ہیں السلام علیکم اینڈ ویلکم ٹو پی جی میز افیشیل یوٹیوب چینل آج ہم آپ کو دکھا رہے ہیں پاکستان فلیم بوائنٹ لیفٹ ہینڈیڈ آل راؤنڈر وسیم حسن راجا وسیم بڑا زبردست پلیئر تھا اور میں نے بڑے بڑے اچھے اچھے بیٹس مینس کو گیندے کی ہیں لیکن وسیم کو بہت سوچ کے کرنی پڑتی تھی کیونکہ یہ آپ کہہ لو کہ لیفٹ ہینڈر ویون رچرڈ تھا اور اس نے پاکستان کی بہت خدمت کی موقع بھی ملا انگلینڈ میں جب میں نوفک سے کھیلتا تھا تو یہ ڈرم سے کھیلتا تھا اور ہی گوٹ ہنڈریڈ اگینسٹ اس اینڈ بٹ وسیم ٹرولی اے جینٹل مین ہز ینگ برادر ینگسٹ برادر رمیز راجا پاکستان کے لیے کھیلا مڈل میں جو بھائی تھا زعیم ہم کٹھے کھیلتے ہوتے تھے یہ رمیز تو چھوٹا تھا زعیم یہ سیریس نہیں تھا اور یہ بھی کھیل سکتا تھا بٹ وسیم ماشاء اللہ ہز ٹرن آؤٹ ٹو بی ون آف دا فائنسٹ آپ کہہ لو کہ پاکستانی آل راؤنڈرز ان کنٹمپری کرکٹ آف اس ٹائمس یہ دیکھیے اور میں جیسے میں نے پہلے بھی کہا کہ میں ہمیشہ پوچھتا بھائی آپ نے کرکٹ کہاں سے شروع کی تو جب میں نے کہا کرکٹ کہاں سے شروع کی یہ سنیے ٹو ڈے آئی ہیو سم بڈی ہوز پلیڈ فار پاکستان ان ففٹی سکس ٹیسٹ اینڈ ایکولی اے نمبر آف ون ڈے انٹرنیشنلس ہیئر ایٹ دی کین بیرنگٹن کرکٹ سینٹر ایٹ دی اوول ان لنڈن آئی گوٹ ود می وسیم راجا ہوز بین اے ڈیشنگ بیٹس مین آف از اون ٹائمس اینڈ آف کورس ناؤ ان اے نیو رول ایز اے کرکٹ کوچ سو آئی تھاٹ وائی ناٹ گیٹ ہولڈ اے وسیم ہیئر ایٹ دی کین بیرنگٹن سینٹر ایٹ دی اوول ان لنڈن اینڈ اسپیک ٹو ہیم اینڈ لیٹ یو نو ہاؤ ہی ایکچولی گوٹ ان ٹو کرکٹ سو ویلکم ٹو دا پروگرام وسیم تھینکس فیجے نا ہاؤ ڈیڈ یو ایکچولی گیٹ ان ٹو کرکٹ او گاش کان ایون تھنک دیٹ فار بیک My father he used to play cricket and uh, when I was a kid I used to go and uh, watch him playing and then my grandfather he was a cricketer as well not that he played test cricket so it, you can say that it, it was in our blood uh, I just followed my father and then got into cricket got into the school team uh, and then just progressed from there and which were your first clubs where you actually started oh gosh uh, it was this Yeah, in Lahore, Service Cricket Club was my first club that I joined. Uh, in those days, I remember we used to have a summer tournament called the Wazir Ali League. Uh, and we used to travel about 10, 12 miles and used to play on matting wicket. Uh, and that, that actually made me determined to do well, to play. Well, I was only about, f I think, 13 or 14 and we used to play against men. Uh, I helped my cricket an awful lot and so service cricket club was my first club and uh, then I just carried on from there. And then I believe you know you went on and represented the government college and universities. Yes I did, I mean education was the prime thing only because I wanted to play for my college and, and for the university. Yeah I was, I was uh, very fortunate enough to uh, represent a government college which is uh, one of the better institute uh, institute in, in in education and then uh, captain of the Punjab University captain of the combined universities as well uh, played with some very fine players and played against some very fine cricketers who uh, to us well even when they were in university I can remember people like uh, Kamran Rashid, Talat Ali uh, then uh, it was Afzal Masood as well very talented player They went on to play a higher level of cricket. Uh, I think in our days, as you know, that Government College cricket team was very strong and we used to win everything. And then the Pakistan University's team again was very strong. We used to play in the, I think, first class tournaments, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Absolutely, because I think we have one thing in common, because when you were captaining the degree, I was captaining the board team. Yes, yeah, I do remember that, yeah. 
Yeah, and Gavin College has produced some very fine players, uh, Shafqat Rana, uh, uh, Majid Khan was there, then Wakar Ahmed and a few other names. Uh, Zafar Altaf was another one from Gavin College, uh, Javed Burki, some yeah, very so fine players. You had, a, you, know, you had a run with one of the, well, I would say one of the world's best at one time. But Wasim, later on when you went on and uh, played for Pakistan, um, do you think cricket then and now is different? Now is more competitive. When I played for Pakistan, it was what three or maximum five test matches in a year. But now the boys are playing every day of the week. They one and the one-day cricket has put an awful lot of pressure and demands on present-day cricketers. Uh, it's more you you got to be more physically fit. Uh, your mental approach is totally different to what I used to be. We used to be just, well, it was just a pride to play for Pakistan and to be, it used to be an honour. But these days, uh, there's an awful lot of money involved in, uh, in the game as well. Uh, everything, everything has changed for, for better. Now, how did you see, you know, when you came along here and played in the first World Cup in 75? Yeah, I was, uh, I mean, in those days we had very, good players in the team and the uh, Pakistan cricket team could afford to carry one or two youngsters and uh, mm -hmm. you were in that squad, so was I, so was Javed Mianda, so we were the three youngsters uh, and yeah, it brings back memories whenever I see the video and uh, especially with my two sons who had never seen me play in test match before. It was funny, I, I showed them the video and they just burst out laughing, long hair, flared trousers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's quite different. Happy, isn't it? Yeah, and good. especially when you were playing with somebody like um, Asif Masood. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, my yeah, Asif uh, was a good friend. Well, he still is. I haven't seen him for years now, but uh, yeah, very fine bowler. In his, uh, he had a very unique style, run up, which I'd never seen anyone else do that. He used to take a step backwards and then come forwards. <laughs> yeah, some fine players in those days. Majid was there. Asif Iqbal, um, then of good, course good area of Imran. names. Yeah, yes, Imran right. was there as well. Yeah. Uh, he looked quite different, doesn't it? And, uh, you know, especially during those periods. Yeah, he just used to run in and b try to bowl as fast as uh, he possibly could, which I think is a very good thing for a youngster if you want to become a fast bowler. Instead of getting a line and direction right, you just run in and try to bowl as fast as you possibly can, and that's one of the reasons why we. Pakistan producing so many young fast bowlers because they just run in and try to bowl as fast as they can. Uh, they've got their heroes, Imran is there, Wasim Akram, they, they all want to be like the heroes. Now coming out of cricket, uh, you devoted yourself in studies and of course uh, you were playing uh, minor county cricket here in England for Durham and then later on you joined um, you know, one of the other schools here and then you were asked to come and coach for Pakistan. How was that role? Yes, I was uh, really surprised one day when I got back from school, I had a telephone call from uh, the, who's the chairman then, I can't even remember, it's, and it's only about four months ago. Uh, Mujibur Rahman, I think. Yeah, Mujibur Rahman, because I mean, they, they keep on changing every <laughs> second week. The, uh, he rang me up and uh, he said, would I like uh, to come and coach in Pakistan? I mean, he never said that the national side, so I said, well, I can't give you any answer on the telephone. So I went to Pakistan, had a meeting with him, and uh, he said, uh, right, we would like you to coach the Pakistan side, which I said, hang on, I can't give you an answer yet because of my job in England. So I came back and uh, had a meeting with the chairman of the governor and our headmaster, and uh, they were very... Uh, sympathetic. They say, right, okay, I can take a year out, go out there and do what I always wanted. I, I wanted to coach the Pakistan side or any national side at the highest level just to prove myself that I can do it at that level. Uh, so I took the team to uh, Toronto and we beat West Indies 3-0 there, came back to Pakistan, then we went to Sharjah to play in a triangular series. Uh, it was Pakistan, Sri Lanka and West Indies. And uh, we won that tournament as well. So 100% record. And then, 
then the political situation in Pakistan changed, so I decided to come back to England and uh, got back into teaching. So it was a d different thing, but how was that experience? It was it was brilliant. I mean, uh, I had 100% support from the players. Wasim Akram gave me his 100%, and all the players. I think it was probably I was uh, well in age, much older than uh, Mudasser or a few other recent coaches Pakistan team has had and they respected me an awful lot uh, and I just said to them give me your hundred percent on the field and off the field which they did and uh, we won both tournaments so why did you leave uh, well I've got a family in England uh, <coughs> I've got two sons and they both study at the same school where I'm teaching uh, my wife, she's a teacher. I mean, if I was single, then I would have packed my bags and uh, stayed on. Uh, I had family commitments as well, so which to me are more important than uh, coaching at my age now. Had I, well, if I was, say, asked to coach the Pakistan side before I got married, I would have uh, stayed with the team for much longer. Now, speaking of coaching, you coach your son, who seems to be a batsman just like you. Slogger. <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's very difficult for me. I've got two boys. Uh, they both play for Surrey. Uh, one plays for the under 16s, the other one plays for the under 17s. Uh, it's very difficult for me as a test player trying to teach them how to play because they, you're always looking for negative aspects of their game. And I, I just leave them alone. I leave the coaching to the other coaches. And then again, I mean, uh, father-son relationship is such that children, they very seldom <laughs> listen to you, listen to their own father or their own parents. So I just leave them alone and uh, let them get on with it. Now, what about Ramiz? Now, Ramiz has turned out to be, in his day, one of the best batsmen for Pakistan. Yes, he's worked hard, Ramiz, uh, in every interview uh, that I've uh, watched or heard. He always gives me credit uh, for his uh, performances in test cricket or how he got into cricket. But again, I mean, it was in our, it still is in our blood. Uh, yeah, he's, he's done extremely well. Uh, I'm, I'm very pleased that two brothers out of uh, three have played for Pakistan and uh, played well. Well, the third one also played first-class cricket. Yes, he did, yeah, but uh, he was a bit lazy. That's why he got out of cricket. <laughs> he never wanted to feel. He always wanted bat, and that was it. <laughs> but, I mean, these days, uh, in modern cricket, you've got to be a batsman and a fielder, a bowler and a fielder. Uh, in our days, if you were a batsman, uh, like Zahir Abbas was, uh, you could get away. But these days, uh, there's so many demands on current players. You've got to be extremely fit, you've got to be uh, doing two things out of three. And that's the only way you can survive these days. I, I, I'm not sure whether I would have survived in modern cricket. <laughs> now, tell me, Asim, a lot of uh, players, or rather people out there, lovers of the game, want to know, you know, that uh, World Cup, the first World Cup uh, you played, and you bowled the last over. Now, how did you feel then? Uh, I, I wasn't nervous because uh, I mean, for a leg spinner to come on the ball last over of the, such an important game. And I remember Majid, he was captaining that side. And I said to him, I think I'd be better off bowling my medium paces. And he said, no, 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 uh, it's just a formality. Just come and uh, run in and bowl your leg breaks. It doesn't matter whether we win or lose. So, I mean, that was the captain's <laughs> role in that game. And uh, if he wasn't bothered, I came and and I tried it, well, I gave my 110% actually, and unfortunately, it didn't work. And But uh, I didn't, well, people blame that you bowled the last over and you lost the game, but it wasn't me. It was, uh, well, West Indies put on, I think, 110 for the last wicket partnership. Uh, six, 65. 60, yeah, 65 or 70, Mario. yeah, exactly. So I put the blame on the bowlers who bowled before me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Now, Vaseem, coming back to modern day cricket, how do you see the Pakistan team now? Uh, the team I had when we went to Sharjah and Toronto, very talented players, 
but uh, there there are f- one or two players who are on uh, decline now. I mean, they they've uh, passed their sell by date. Uh, Pakistan. When I was there in Pakistan, uh, I, I saw very fine youngsters, and I think those players, players like I mean, Inzamamul Haq is a great player, but uh, he is past his sell by date, I think, uh, and one or two others, Wasim Akram, even though he's a very fine bowler now, but he has lost that pace. Uh, but recently, we just uh, heard news that uh, he stepped down as captain and Sayyid Anwar has taken over. But Wasim will still continue playing, trying to break uh, Kapil Dev's record. Yeah, I mean, cricket is not all about breaking records or it's, you should, well, player like Wasim Akram, if he retires today, I'm sure the whole of Pakistan and the rest of the world will remember him as Wasim Akram, one of the finest bowlers the world has ever seen. Not that he's the world record holder. I mean, people still remember Richard Hadley, people still remember uh, Ian Botham, even though they, he hasn't got the world record. So it's uh, how well you perform and how badly you want it. I mean, Wasim Akram wanted it badly. But, I mean, if Wasim Akram doesn't get his 400 test records against Sri Lanka in, in Sri Lankan series, then will he carry on? I think he should step down now, play the series. If he doesn't get the record, who cares? He should retire. And Sayyid Anwar, very fine player. But again, he's what, how old is he? 36, 37? Around that, yeah. yeah. But so basically, I mean, uh, the, uh, what you're saying is that people shouldn't be kept in the team for records. They should be there alone on merit. Yeah, exactly. Uh, looking at the record, uh, I mean, recent series against Australia, Pakistan struggle uh, not only in bowling but in batting as well uh, so give youngsters a chance bring them in let them perform well they'll perform badly or uh, even as well as the current players are performing let them give the opportunity let them have the opportunity to play at the highest level that's where you get cricketers not well not not the people who have been tried out before uh, I think uh, with the new board and the new uh, selection committee now in the recent series against uh, Sri Lanka in the one days they, they played four new players which I think is a very good policy even though Pakistan lost but at least those youngsters they know that they're there and if they perform they'll carry on playing for Pakistan which is putting an awful lot of pressure on the older players as well Great. a lot of, lot of uh, competition uh, it's healthy competition, which is good. Absolutely. Now, Vaseem, who's been your best captain or the person you've really admired as a captain for Pakistan? Uh, I've personally well, played under so many captains, but to choose one out of eight or nine captains is not an easy thing. But I think Mushtaq Muhammad was the best captain I ever played under, even though Imran won more test matches as captain or Asif Iqbal won more test matches as captain but Mushtaq Muhammad had a very very good cricketing brain and he knew how to get 110% out of his players yes Mushi was I think the best a true professional you'd say yeah definitely and who would be uh, the best all-rounder for Pakistan you'd say well after me after you (laughs) (laughs) I mean, record shows that Imran, uh, without a doubt, Imran, yeah. And Asif Iqbal wasn't bad either. Uh, but Imran, uh, definitely the best all-rounder I've played with. Yeah. Right. Now, what tip would you give all the youngsters out there that uh, they should learn from you to play better cricket? Work hard. Uh, you can never become a good cricketer unless you listen and work on your faults. Uh, go out there, enjoy your cricket. Enjoyment must come first before anything else. If you don't enjoy the game, then you can't play it properly. 
So, uh, so these that's are the it. main things. Yeah. yeah. Now we've got people like Khan Muhammad, you know, who will come and uh, give a few tips. Will you spare some time and give all those youngsters out there? And give some tips? Uh, now. Not now. <laughs> <laughs> no, during yes. the course. Yes, uh, yeah, I'll be delighted. To. Because it's basically geared for the Pakistanis and the Asians living in this country. Mm. I'll be delighted to do that, yeah. Just give me a shout and I'll come and do it. Excellent, Wasim. Thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. Vaseem Hassan Raja, a legend, and I have a gift. It's not a gift from Vaseem. It's a gift from the Pakistan Cricket Board. That's the time of the time. When the death of Vaseem was done, the Pakistan team was coming back from London. They were playing outside of London, so they were coming back to London. So, their wedding was in Woking. So, we were glued to it. I was Asif Iqbal and Ramiz was there. And quite a few other cricketers ये गए उधर तो हम नमाज नमाज़े जनाज़ा पढ़ी लेकिन अफसोस ये है कि cricketers जो उनके colleagues थे Pakistani team के junior से बेशक लेकिन इनको आना चाहिए था ख़राज़ तैसीन अपने cricketers के अपने cricketer के लिए पेश करनी चाहिए थी ये एक मेरे दिल में अफसोस हमेशा रहेगा but I guess that's the way the world moves कि जब चले जाते हो तो फिर कोई पूछता नहीं है जब होते हो फिर and of course, at the end of the day, uh, keep looking forward to more interviews with Office.